Good morning, everyone. I'm seated at a, a different table just because I like to change the view, but I have my friends here this morning. They follow me around the lakes behind me. I'm using my old tripod because it will stand up on the table just right above my laptop so I can look at it that way. Okay, we are not looking at the Antichrist in this recent event that we just had. It's been since 1981, I think, that uh, an attempted assassination was carried out. So I guess that they've either had better coverage or nobody really wanted to eliminate somebody. But the hatred, the, the vehement hatred for the big T guy. I'm not even sure if I want to say his name. I don't have a problem. Personally, he's a jerk. Most rich guys can be. And he is. But he stands up for what he believes in. And he didn't take pay off from these people. Most of the politicians that you look at got rich in office. And they don't make that much money. Like the saying goes, there's a saying out, I've seen it, that says, I'd rather not see the income tax return for a, a billionaire becoming president, I'd much rather see the tax returns of someone who was not a billionaire, got into office, well, millionaire anyway for them. Pelosi's a billionaire, but she's been in office a long time. Okay, so we're not looking at the Antichrist for a number of reasons. One, the world loves the Antichrist in the beginning. So it can't be Trump, it can't be Biden, it can't be, you know, it can't be uh, Obama to be the Antichrist. Now, we've got other candidates. There's plenty of rich candidates out there. Now, which one could it be? We don't know. It says that there are seven kings. We'll get into this in a bit. Seven kings. The seventh king, some of them are already dead. So that's over history they've died. The seventh king is killed, resurrected, and comes back as the eighth king, and then gets the polyon and becomes the Antichrist. That's the process. We're not seeing that. Just getting shot at does not make you the Antichrist. Okay. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no one deceive you in any way, for it will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, is revealed. So, talking about Jesus coming back. We're not talking about the rapture here. We're talking about Jesus coming back uh, or the day of the Lord. Uh, we're not going to see that until after the Antichrist is revealed. We're not supposed to see the Antichrist as Christians, so we have to go before that in order for everything to work. Um, two fives. Do you not remember that I told you these things while I was still with you? And you know what is now restraining him? So that he may be revealed at the proper time. The Holy Spirit is restraining him, but not God. The Holy Spirit that is in us, we are restraining him. We can pray and keep Satan at bay. So he wants us out of here. He's about ready to pull the switch. So he needs us out of here. My next video, I think I'm going to talk about the rapture. So pay attention to that. We're so close, we're getting more rapture predictors. But we're going to look at some of that. 2-7, uh, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now restrains it will continue until he's taken out of the way. 
the rapture. When we're removed from the earth, Satan will have full reign and the Antichrist will have full reign. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will slay with the breath of his mouth, with a mouse, mouth and annihilate by the majesty of his arrival. Coming back. The coming of the lawless one will be accompanied by the working of Satan with every kind of power, sign, and false wonder. Have you seen any of those? I haven't. Oh, my hair is always a problem in the morning. The sun's not quite above the trees yet. It's up. I'm looking at it. It's about 20 degrees up on the trees there. And it about 15, 20 minutes, it'll probably be above the trees. And then I'll have bright light on me. Maybe too bright. <clears throat> okay. So let's take a look at the Antichrist and see well, more of, of the Bible and we'll see what it says. Revolution, revolution, rev up. I'm having tongue problems this morning. I didn't finish my cup of coffee. But people started to pull in and I realized I'd better get this done early before it's still the weekend. It's Sunday, but we don't have churchgoers out here all the time. These are people who just use the weekend for play. And we even had a boater last night at 1130 at night till 1230, till after midnight, tooling around on the lake with his bright lights on and revving his motor up. And they know no one's going to catch him because we don't have Coast Guard here on this little peninsula that we're on. All right. Revelation 13.1. Then I saw a beast with ten horns, seven heads rising out of the sea. There were ten royal crowns on the thorns, on the horns, and blasphemous, blasphemous names on its heads. We're getting a description of combination of the harlot and the beast. The beast I saw was like a leopard with the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. Those are character traits. And the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. <clears throat> One of the heads of the beast appeared to be mortally wounded. That's the key. That's why Trump is not the Antichrist. One of the reasons. He wasn't mortally wounded. But the mortal wound was healed. Mortal death. He was killed, okay, the Antichrist. The seventh king is killed, comes back as the eighth king. But the mortal wound was healed, and the whole world marveled and followed the beast. The whole world marveled and followed the beast. Do you see anybody out there right now that that's happening to? No. The seventh king is here today. He's out there somewhere. But he's not the eighth king yet. He's not the Antichrist. 13.4, they worship the dragon who had given authority to the beast. They worship Satan. Beautiful world. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to speak, arrogant and blasphemous words, and authority to act for 42 months. <clears throat> Are we there yet? No. No. And the beast opens his mouth to speak blasphemies against God and to slander his name and his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. <clears throat> then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints to conquer them, and it was given authority over every tribe, people, tongue, and nation. Whenever you see those words together, it means the whole world. Okay. Let's move forward into Revelation 17.1. Then one of the seven angels with the seven bowls came and said to me, These are the bowls of wrath, the wrath of God. Come and I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. That's the harlot. That's Babylon. It's not mystery Babylon. There's a comma between there. there she is a mystery, but it is not mystery Babylon. 
who sits on many waters. The kings of the earth were immoral with her, and those who dwell on the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. The world is just going to have no, no control. Sodom and Gomorrah, the days of Noah. This is where we get this kind of an idea from. <clears throat> and the angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness where I saw the woman sitting on a scarlet beast. That's the Antichrist. Who's helping her initially until things are set up. <clears throat> there goes my geese behind me. They just flew by. Hit the water. <laughs> Uh, scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. Kings and kingdoms. But not proper kings. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. She held in her hand a golden cup filled full of abominations. Symbology. But you get the message. This is not a nice lady, or in this case, figurative lady, as far as being Babylon. Uh, get off of me. Get these little bugs out here, and they, they don't bother me. They don't bite. They just tickle. They're distracting. And on her forehead, uh, a mysterious name was written, Babylon the Great. Mysterious name. That's kind of how we get that. Babylon the Great the mother of prostitutes and of abominations of the earth. I don't think I'd want to know this person. I could see that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and witnesses for Jesus. She's killing Christians, literally. And I was utterly amazed at the sight of her. <clears throat> Why are you so amazed, said the angel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw, it was, and now is no more, but is about to come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. When they opened the bottomless pit, the abyss, the polyon, the abandoned, depending on which language you want to look at, comes out and enters this resurrected dead king. And those who dwell on the earth whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and yet to be. He exists as the seventh king. He's killed, comes back as the eighth. Revelation and a lot of the prophetic writings are little itty bitty visions you got to put these all back together to get a complete composite. That's why we read out of 13, now we're in 17. <clears throat> this calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. So she's covering, these are seven nations basically, or key parts. So many people have tried to interpret this. There's a lot of prophecy, and I think this is part of it, that isn't meant to give you a clue to deal with it. It's to show that afterwards, God knew what he was doing. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. But when he does, he must remain only a little while, 42 months. The beast that was now is not, is an eighth king who belongs to the other seven and is going into destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but will receive one hour of authority as kings along with the beast. So they're not true kings. It's not like King Charles. These are probably very wealthy people who are going to kind of get their one world government for a little while. These kings have one purpose, to yield their power and authority to the beast. They will make war against the lamb, and the lamb will triumph over them. But they will make war against the lamb first, and there will be martyrs. This is 
after we're gone. You've got to warn people that if they miss the rapture, it's not over. There's still hope for them, but they might have to be martyred. They might have to make a choice, Satan or God. Make sure they know where they're going with each one. As real estate will say, it's location, location, location. Do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? It's an eternal choice. Don't make a mistake. <clears throat> and he will be accompanied by his called and chosen, the faithful ones, us. And the angel said to me, the waters you saw uh, where the prostitute was seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, the world, and the ten horns of the beast that you saw will hate the prostitute and they will leave her desolate and naked and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So the harlot will be destroyed first. Jesus is going to have to deal with the Antichrist. For God has put into their hearts to carry out his purpose by uniting to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of the God are fulfilled. This is all prophetic, so they've got to basically do all this stuff until it is over. When the woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. So we will get one world government for a moment, but only for a moment. Okay, so I've seen where people have said that Trump was the Antichrist, and it's, that's why I'm doing this real quick lesson on that. He's not, because he's not loved by the world. He's loved by his group, his MAGA group, however you want to call it. But the peoples and powers that be are creating hatred, vehement hatred for Trump. And they're telling lies that if he gets in, your country's gone. It, he will destroy your country. The United States will be gone. You will be homeless. You will be starving to death. I mean, just the opposite is true. That's the way Satan is. If he doesn't get in, we're going to be destroyed as a country. They're doing it right in front of our eyes right now. Now, this person was probably put up to this and helped. Someone said something about the Secret Service said that they, it was outside their coverage area. Wrong. If you're protecting a dignitary, see the sun's just now coming up, hit me in the face. If you're protecting somebody, you protect them from anything that can come to them and hit them from any direction. You don't go, well, I'm not going to look past this area. Because this rooftop that this guy was on had a clear shot, 400 feet. That's an easy shot for pretty much any rifle. And he had an AR rifle. And he was a local, lived there close by. So he wasn't a Muslim. He wasn't a whatever. He was just somebody in this country that hates Trump because they've been feeding them this, these lies and they've built up this hatred. Ultimately, our government is responsible for this attempted assassination because of the lies that they're feeding, which makes Biden culpable and all the other politicians on his side culpable for this. But nothing's going to happen. They killed the shooter, so we're never going to get any more information. And JFK was shot they also killed the shooter so they wouldn't find out the truth. It's a cover-up. And if the FBI investigates it, the FBI is in the pocket of the beast, or the harlot anyway. So we're not going to get a good investigation. We might as well just brush this off and move on. But hopefully Trump will be more careful. He needs to have his own bodyguards up there and they need to basically scope this out. This was an easy coverage. And you see how quickly he was taken out and shot in the head. Not wounded, not captured, killed. So he couldn't testify. 
we have an evil government running our country right now. Pray for it to end. Pray for the good people to get back into office as much as you want. It will get us out of here. The more you pray to stop Satan, the sooner we'll be leaving because we're in the way. Make sure you do your homework. If Satan can get a lie out there and people can start pro promoting a lie, he doesn't care what the lie is as long as it's a lie. Because then at the right time he brings somebody out that will reveal that it was a lie and the people will all walk away discouraged, throw their hands up. He wins. If you hear something, take it in. But don't be sharing it until you've had a chance to check it out. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. I'm going to do a rapture video on the next one. And we'll see just how close maybe we are. Till we meet in the clouds. God bless.